attacking. We're just you know, moving around and playing show offense that, that lends to uh, you know, that, that type of defense. So they did a pretty good job there. And then, you know, when we did get pretty good looks, we struggled to make them. So a combination of those two things really hurt us. When we were able to get stops, get out and run, we were okay. Chase? Yeah, Wes, was there a common thread uh, when it came to the three-pointers, uh, shooting eight for 42 tonight? Uh, we missed them. Uh, you know, I think it's, uh, you know, some, some were good, some were great, some weren't. So you know, I think it's just uh, the combination of those things on, on top of their changing defense, their physicality, it got to us a bit. But you know, I think we, we generated decent looks for the most part, and we just stepped up, couldn't make them. And uh, all three of your point guards uh, went scoreless until Neto had that layup with like five minutes left. Was there something about uh, the way they were defending your guards that made it especially tough tonight? Yeah, they do a great job. Honestly, I have to give them a lot of credit. Uh, we have to be better um, as far as organizing ourselves, screening, attacking. I thought a bit, at times we were a bit passive, but I give uh, you know Charlotte a lot of credit. They, they jumped it up and uh, we fell into that trap. We will go back to Neil. Hey, Coach, for Daniel Gafford, it seemed like he was a bit hard on himself. The previous few games had a good start, you know, maybe took a step back in the second half. What did you see from him? Well, he was great early. You know, he's kind of like the lone bright spot, you know, in that first half. Kept us afloat. Um, well, he did a lot of good things. His activity, uh, his presence around the rim, second chance opportunities, you know, late passes, his finishing in traffic. Uh, it's tough to do in a zone against the zone, and w which we saw quite a bit in the second half. But you know, early in the game, I thought he was great. Josh, Wes, I know these are these are pros, and they've seen every kind of defense, but see the zone less often. Um, how much of a jarring change is it for even pros to to suddenly be faced with a with a zone like that? I, mean, I think we're seeing more and more of it you know, now than before, but it's still uh, sporadic at best. You know, it's something that we, we talked about at shoot around. We knew they were going to go to it, mm -hmm. uh, walk through some things. And, you know, for the most part, you know, it, it wasn't bad. It's the fact that, you know, when you, you get those open looks and they don't go down, uh, it has a compounding effect. Uh, they're, they're getting out and they're running. Uh, we're kind of on our heels a bit, but it's demoralizing. You know, you, you're doing the right thing and it's just not working. So we just have to kind of, Calm down and get accustomed to seeing it because more and more teams are going to do it. Um, there's a good chance we'll see it tomorrow. So we have to be ready for it. All right, we will go back to Ava, who's in the room now. Sorry, Wes, I was going to ask you to repeat yourself when this is the third quarter there. Was it just a change on defense that kind of got you guys set up? Because you were doing everything pretty much well. So at that point, yeah, I this, I mean, our whole second half, yeah. we really struggled to score. And uh, you know, I, I got to give uh, you know JB and his staff, and the Hornets, a lot of credit. They were able to change the complexion of the game just by shifting defenses and putting a little more pressure on us. Um, we struggled to make shots, and I thought that really started to bother us, wear on us. Um, but you know, that's the nature of it. We, we got to be ready to step up and, and make the open ones. We struggled to do that tonight. Well, I mean, some of it was still the turnovers, but um, it's, we, we stressed, you know, don't be so passive. Stay aggressive. I mean, you, you, you kind of fall into that if we're just playing shell offense around, around the horn. And against the zone, yeah, you can play inside out, but you can also drive it, you know, attack it, screen it. Um, I, I just thought we were, you know, really passive on the perimeter instead of getting downhill and attacking. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, you know, we try to shrug, shrug this one off a bit, but we, we also got to look at it and learn from it because I think we'll, we'll continue to see some of the same defenses and we don't want to fall into the same mistakes. Uh, first person I learned to say was Jesus Christ. Um, I'd be lying if I said it was easy. Um, it was still a little tough. Uh, my body felt good. Like I was energetic. Uh, Definitely felt energetic after not doing anything for a few days, but also kind of 
needed a little rhythm to get into, so I kind of got off to a little slow start. But uh, more or less, it was just it was kind of getting myself into the mental mind frame of getting ready to play, uh, and that was tough. That's tough because you know I kind of use basketball as my getaway, but it's, it reminds me of her a lot, you know. So uh, I just try to try to keep it as control and tame it as much as possible. I know it's not a it's not something you can get get over or you know kind of ignore. You just kind of got to take the punches and roll with them. You know, it's going to be good days, bad days. Um, and I've learned that from a lot of people over the last few days who've experienced, you know, similar trauma or, you know, this type of uh, unfortunate situation. But, you know, you just keep pushing, pushing every day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I flew in with the team. Everything was good. Uh, Got back yesterday morning to DC and flew with the team that afternoon. Um, and went through my routine. Everything was the same. Uh, I was just when I get to a gym, it, it, my mindset kind of kind of goes all over the place a little bit. So uh, it's good I'm able to just kind of control it and relax and just remember to be at peace. Uh, I think we just – we stopped being aggressive, especially on offense. I think we settled for a lot of jumpers. Uh, granted, we had a lot of good looks. We just didn't make them. Uh, but I think we, we still could have put a lot of pressure on the rim. Got to the free throw line a lot more. Uh, you know, kind of slowed down their run, slowed down the pace of the game. And, and get what we wanted. You know, I think on offense we got – it was too many no-pass shots. Um, you know, that kind of led out to them getting out in transition for easy shots for them. Um, so – just being better with moving the ball, not turning it over, and then and sustaining runs. Every team is going to go on a run, but you know we got to be able to sustain them and retaliate. Chase. Hey, Brad. Uh, welcome back. Um, what do you think was sort of the the common thread for your guys' three point shooting tonight, going uh, eight for forty two? Uh, I don't know. I think it was a lid on it tonight, Chase, for whatever reason. Uh, well, we got good looks. Some some weren't good. I think we had we had the no-pass shots, you know, where we didn't get guys, you know, the ball didn't swing side to side. I think those hurt us the most. But for the most part, I think the times we did get in the pain, we were able to move the ball. Uh, we got good looks. But I think uh, when, it, when they went to zone, they kind of hurt us a little bit because we got stagnant. We didn't move around. You know, we didn't move bodies. We didn't get in the paint for the kickouts. You know, we kind of just swung the ball around the perimeter and, you know, where it was open, kind of shot it. You know, we have to be better with that. But more or less, you know, we just, we just got to knock down shots. You know, I don't – it's not because of one thing or another. We just we just got to knock them down. You know, we took 40 of them. And uh, you mentioned the zone. Wes said he expects you guys might see some of that uh, tomorrow night. Uh, what do you think you guys need to do to break it? Uh, be more aggressive, you know, uh, attack those gaps. Um, I'll probably implement myself more in, into playing the middle of the zone and just kind of create some havoc there because zones usually collapse when you, you get the ball to the middle. You know, you're able to get a lot of, you know, weak side passes or open looks from that. So uh, just being – we just got to move more, move bodies, and uh, be ready to shoot. We got to knock them down. I mean, we're going to get the looks, so we just got to be ready to shoot and knock them down. Neil. Hey, Brad. Trez shared after uh, Sunday, Monday's game that, you know, he reached out to you and, you know, checking in. If, if you're willing to share, you know, what has it meant to you that your teammates have supported you through this time and anything in particular that, you know, really meant a lot to you? Uh, I mean, it's just a constant support is always appreciative. You know, my teammates have been there since the news broke. I mean, just everybody from the organization top down, everybody's been very supportive and, uh, you know, uplifting. You know, it's, it's tough because a, a lot of words don't make you feel better. They're not going to, you know, change anything. But, you know, to have that type of encouragement and support is awesome. Uh, you know, it gives, gives me people to lean on and, you know, um, I'm able to trust my peers and, and just rely on them. You know, if I'm having a tough day, I know Trez is there to pick me up. Denny's there. I have teammates, AG. I have everybody there that can, you know, lift me up and pick me up and, and vice versa for them. So 
Uh, you know, I'm happy to be a part of a, a very unselfish group. Um, you know, life is bigger than basketball in a lot of ways. And uh, family, nothing's bigger than family. So I'm definitely appreciative of the love and support, not only from my teammates, but from everybody. You know, everybody around the world, you know, everybody who's reached out via social media, you media, people speaking now, like everybody. I'm, my family and I are very appreciative during this time, for sure. Um, I mean, I just, I felt like that I lost my aggressiveness coming out in the second half. I mean, you know, we went on a bit of a run coming out and then it's just, you know, it was stagnant for me. I wasn't getting the, um, I wasn't, you know, in tune with the pace and stuff. I feel like anymore, you know, I felt like I was kind of holding the team back at the time because of just like the simple fact that I wasn't really just doing the things I did in the first half and the second. So really just, I really can't even explain it. You know, I'm pretty sure everybody had seen it. You know, I didn't really come out with the same intensity that I came out with at the beginning of the game during the second half. Mm -hmm. Going up against Tisnell, what, what kind of frazzled you about that, I guess? Um, I mean, tonight really we just, I would say it was every now and then that we attacked the zone. You know, we were trying to find shots outside the perimeter. And if we, we you know, attacked the zone, we got basically whatever we wanted. You know, we got the shots that we wanted inside. Um, some of them didn't fall. We came back in and got a rebound, um, so to speak. And then just really just felt like it caught us off guard that they stayed in the zone after the first, like, I would say, missed three. After, um, then that, it just, you know, kind of just, like, put us in a bit of a bind. You know, we really, I feel like we really didn't know what to do um, just throughout. Then, you know, we were taking shots and we were missing, and I felt like that really kind of, like, took the momentum out, out for us because, you know, when we miss shots, it's like, you know, guys really think about that, especially if they want to <clears throat> – especially when they, you know, are wide open or if we're moving the ball and we get a great shot out of it, you know, just simple things. Neil. Yeah. Hey, Daniel, um, after your third foul, I think early in the third quarter, you know, you were a little frustrated with yourself. It seemed like Spencer came over, you know, maybe gave you some words of encouragement. How does that help you maybe just reset and try and, you know, put that behind you? I mean, it lets me know that, you know, I just have to take it one play at a time. You know, it's going to be a lot of things that happen that doesn't go my way. I really can't get frustrated with it because it's still like a lot of game left. So for him to come up and, you know, just really give me like motivating words and stuff kind of brought me back down to earth because, you know, my mind was everywhere. You know, I got my third foul, which didn't think was a foul. Um, just in that situation, him coming over to talk to me and stuff, you know, it really brought me back down to earth to be able to help me, you know, withstand the rest of the game. And I guess what, what do you think was working for you so well, especially in the first half? Um, really just a level of confidence that I came out to play with. You know, I didn't really, I didn't really think about, any mistakes that I made. I didn't really think about, you know, if I miss a shot um, that is putting us in a bad way. I just went out and played ball, you know, just came out, you know, didn't really have a conscience, just went out and played basketball. That's the main thing. Just, you know, did the right things, was in the right spot, you know, made the right plays and did everything I could do for the most part. Thanks, Daniel. Case. Hey, man, I missed the very start. Sorry if this was asked, but you guys didn't um, send them to the free throw line until midway through the third quarter. Um, just kind of how, how do you think that that happened? Do you guys do a good job of defending without fouling, or do you feel like maybe you should have been more aggressive, or what do you think? Just, you know, being in the right spots at the right time. It was a lot of miscommunication on my end as well, you know, not really um, being the vocal point of the defense, really just being out there and just being one of those guys that doesn't talk. That's the main thing. But other than that, you know, um, time and time again, there was a lot of calls that really didn't feel like that should have been called. But at the end of the day, the refs have a job too. So. And uh, what would you like you guys to adjust uh, going into your uh, meeting with the Heat tomorrow? Main thing is just, you know, they run his own, attack his own. That's the main thing. But other than that, you know, just keep shooting. And the main, like, other, like, yeah, really just keep shooting. And if shots don't fall, it's okay. 
it's not the end of the world. It's not the end of the game. You know, we can always get better looks down the floor and really just not having, I would say, you know, one pass possessions, um, me not making dumb mistakes and trying to get downhill and be a point guard. Um, really just certain things like that, you know.